And James P. Hoffa, the chairman, the general president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, teamster.org, of course, the website on the line with us. Mr. Hoffa, welcome to the program. How are you doing, Tom? I am great. I hope you are well. Well, I'm well because uh, I'm here in Columbus, Ohio, and we're rallying uh, against a bill that would take away the collective bargaining rights and the rights of thousands and thousands of public employees. We've got, you know, maybe 40,000 people out here. We had a great program, great speaking program. Most importantly, I think the people inside can hear the power of the people. This is like deja vu all over again. Madison moves to, uh, to what, Columbus? Absolutely, and then we're going to keep it going from here to Indianapolis. Yeah. We've got to keep this battle on because, let's face it, uh, the, the far right, you know, the, the, the Tea Party people, the Coke brothers, they're on, they, they got an agenda, and they're not going to stop. They started in Wisconsin, they went to Indiana, Indiana, then they're going here, and then they're going to go to Maine, then they're going to go to New Hampshire, they're going to go to Missouri. They have a plan. Uh, and they've got they billions of dollars. <laughs> and they, they introduced and had their, you know, their, their, their pawns introduce right to work in 13 states simultaneously. Right. You know, that shows, you know, you talk about a vast right-wing conspiracy. That proves it right there. Do you think that there's any possibility that the uh, card check legislation, the, the Employee Free Choice Act, could be rewritten as a state law and introduced in, in various states around the country? It, it could be in the right state, but you're going to need, you know, a Democratic governor and a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate. There's a few and of those. The losses, we, we took tremendous losses in November. Mm-hmm. You, you, you really, you know, how that happened, how it happened, whatever happened. And now we lost over 700 Democratic representatives throughout the country. And a lot of places where we had majorities, we lost a governor. Look at here, you know, in Ohio, we, we lost a, a really good um you know, in Ted Strickland, we lost a really good governor, and now we got Kasich, and he's on a roll to destroy organized labor. Yeah. You know, he's got the same playbook that they have in Wisconsin, the same playbook in Indiana, and the same playbook in everywhere you go. Every time there's a Republican, he's basically bought and paid for by big business, and they start with the same agenda. Well, it seems to me, uh, we're talking with James P. Hoffa, the general president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, Teamster.org. It seems to me, Mr. Hoffa, that the that the average person in America, as a consequence in particular of what's been going on in Wisconsin, is starting to realize that the Republican Party is basically the party of billionaires and transnational corporations, and the Democratic Party has been historically the party supported by labor, as, as Shepard Smith admitted on Fox News, if they could just destroy the Democrats, they could have a single-party rule, basically, uh, because it represents the interests of the people. And I, I, I'm just I, I wondering if you think that this is, or if you're seeing a renaissance in the labor movement, in, in people waking up and showing up and participating. I think we are, and in, in, I think it starts with a number of things. Number one, Organized labor is, they see the attack. And organized labor has come together. But most importantly, I think we're, you know, we're, we're invigorating the average worker out there, the teacher, the fireman, the policeman, the nurse, who never thought, I mean, they might belong to a union, but they never thought that they would be the targets. And all of a sudden, they want to take away everything they fought for, collective bargaining. They want to lower their wages, take away their pensions and health care. And they basically want to roll the clock back, you know, to 1890. And, you know, we know who caused, you know, the great crash and the reason why all these states have deficits. It's Wall Street. You know, it was, uh, you know, the subprime and the derivatives. We all know that story. It wasn't a long time ago. And now, because they're in trouble, now they want to get all that money back, not from Wall Street, not from the billionaires, not from the corporations. They want to get it back from some teacher, some fireman, the people that can least afford it. So... You know, that's the message we're getting out, and, and hopefully not only you know, we're, we're going to really realize, and the people coming out, I think there was over 100,000 people last Saturday in Madison. I think people are getting the message that, you know, this is not about, you know, whether I belong to a union or whether I'm a Democrat. This is about going after you and your family yeah. and your life. Yeah. And, and this is more than belong, do I belong to a union or am I a Democrat. When people start coming after your family, 
and they're going to say, you're going to make less money. We're going to lower it by 10%, and we're going to basically start rolling the clock back. And gonna, people start saying, wait a minute, this is serious. So hopefully we're finally getting through. What we've been preaching, hopefully we'll get through to a lot of people that are going to realize what's at stake here. What's at stake is our middle class, which is basically the public employees, the private sector, the people that work hard every day. You know, your neighbor and my neighbor that go to work every day and they and they have a life where maybe they can send their kids to college and they have a home. You know, maybe, you know, and you know what? There are people that don't want us to have that. Mm-hmm. There are people that say, you know, a nurse making $40,000 that went to college for four years, that she's overpaid. Does anybody believe that? Or that a fireman that goes out and puts out fires or a, you know, or a policeman or a nurse, and they're going after probably the least vulnerable. And, and there's a lot of nurses where I'm at here in, in Columbus, Ohio. I'm sitting right outside the Capitol, and there's nurses, there's teachers, there's firemen you know, wearing their fire hats. That's what this is about. And get people, and, but I think the most important thing, we've got to have a wake-up call to the American worker. And you know what? Maybe this is it. Well, there's there's another thing at work here too, and and that is the the and this is playing out in the media from from Meet the Press to Fox News, and that is there's no discussion. There, there's a, there's a, a joke going around actually right now about you know a, there's a there's a CEO, a Tea Party guy, and a union guy, union worker. The three of them sitting at a table with a dozen cookies in front of them. CEO grabs eleven cookies and chows them down, and then points to the Tea Party guy. And says to him, "Look out for that union guy sitting next to you. He wants part of your cookie." And that's a good one. It, well, that's what's going on. And and it, it you know nobody's talking about the fact that this country was crashed by thirty years of Reaganomics, by insane trade policies, insane tax policies, a deregulation of the banksters, theft and fraud by you know by the banking industry. None of that has been recovered. Nobody's going after that stuff. The messaging on that has gotten completely lost, and instead they're trying, as you point out, they're trying to make it all about class warfare. They're trying to get average working, non-unionized people to be jealous of the fact that public sector employees who are members of unions are the last group of Americans, for all practical purposes, who still have decent pay and wages. And instead of this insane race to the bottom, let's start a race to the top. Well, that's exactly right. I saw an interview, um, you know, with the, the, the governor of New Jersey. I mean, he was insane what he was saying. And he was saying you know, he, like, exactly what you said. He was said, you know, the middle class should be mad at the, at the teachers. Right. And they should be mad at the firemen. And I'm saying, I, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Uh, because they have decent wages, because they have a pension. Shouldn't we all want that? Aren't right. we all entitled to that in America? Is this a race to the bottom that only the rich get richer? You know, uh, you know, everybody knows and every article says that no one has, wages have gone up in the past 10 years, that 1% of the people control half of the wealth of the country. And, you know, and that's gone up from 10 years ago or five years ago. They have a statistic about 20 years ago, uh, the average, you know, the CEO made 25 times the wage of the average worker. Now they make 225 times the wage of the average worker, uh, you know, they're getting richer and we're going down. And the answer is they want more of that. So now that they've taken over some of these state houses, you know, here in Ohio, in Indiana, uh, in Wisconsin, watch out because they're coming for you. And you know what? Maybe this is the wake-up call American workers need. Maybe this is what we need to get people off. And we have an election next time. They're going to go after, you know, Kasich, and they're going to go after Walker, and they're going to say... They're not taking my life away. They're not taking my home away. They're not taking my pension away. Maybe we'll get people mad because, you know, we got to get as mad as hell and fight back. Well, these guys are betting that, you know, that's a year and a half away and that's an eternity in politics and that with, uh, you know, enough millions of dollars from the Koch brothers and other big funders that they can change people's minds, that they can convince them of, of otherwise, uh, you know, that, that up is down. Do you think, uh, James Hoffa, that the that the average American is going to be able to cut through the onslaught of advertising that's on its way? Well, we're going to have to. I mean, you will watch Fox News. It's all about, you know, how bad the workers are. Sure. How the workers have too much. Does anybody think that workers out there, that have, you know, we've lost 8 million jobs since the Great Recession, uh, we've got 10% unemployment, 
We've got jobs going to Mexico, China, and India, closing down factories. Anybody think we got it good? But you watch them. That's all they talk about, how there's a war on the workers and how they, we've got to give up more. So maybe this is the wake-up call that all of us need. I, 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 think, I think it is. I really do. I think this is a turning point in history. James P. Hoffa, the general president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, teamster.org. Uh, Mr. Hoffa, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Tom. Good talking with you.